Hey there guys, it's Amit and welcome back to DevDreamer. So you've learnt quite a lot then when it comes to CSS. In this lesson, we're going to look at CSS positioning and understanding how to lay out your elements on the page and how to correctly position them is vital when it comes to CSS. So then, the way that we position our elements is we use the position property. And those five positions can be static, relative, absolute, fixed, or sticky. Now you might notice here that we actually don't have one for sticky. We'll come on to that a bit later on in this lesson. For now, let's just talk about what we've got uh, on the screen here. So I've got four divs with a class of box. Each has its own ID. So this has an ID of static, relative, absolute, and fixed. And then down here, we have some lorem ipsum, uh, just a bunch of text. And again, we'll look at that a bit later on in this video. If we head on over to our style.css file, we can see that we have a class of box, okay, which just basically defines this box here. And then we have the following properties. So for static, it's a red color. Relative is blue. Absolute is yellow. Fixed is green. And sticky, we'll come on to that one. So the first thing to understand is that all elements by default are static. And what this basically means is that the element is positioned according to the normal flow of the document. In other words, this is the default value. So all these are actually currently positioned static, even though in our CSS, we haven't actually specified position static. But because this is a tutorial, and of course we're trying to learn this, I'm actually going to add position of static to our red square. Okay. Now there are some properties such as top, left, bottom, and right, and we'll use them when we, uh, when we come to looking at these, that won't actually work on elements that have a position of static. Okay, so if I was to come here and say top, so in other words, I want to move this down. In fact, let's go, um, let's say left. And what this means is I want to move this red square left by, um, let's just say, 200 pixels. And as you can see, nothing's happened. It's remained where it is. Because again, by default, all elements that you put onto the page have a position of static. And so properties such as left, right, bottom and top won't actually take effect on these elements. To do that and to move your element around on the page, you need to have any other position other than static. So now let's take a look at our position of relative, this uh, blue square here. On this blue square, I'm going to add a position of a relative. Okay, and it's made no difference at the moment, but you'll see that now we can actually manipulate this element. So if I go left, and the same thing as we did in here, left 200 pixels again, let's see what happens. As you can see now, this is now moved across by 200 pixels from the left. Okay, hence left 200 pixels. And the reason why this has moved is because this has a position of relative. Now, when we say relative, it's positioned relative. What we're saying is that it's positioned relative to itself. In other words, it's positioned relative to its normal position in the actual document. So if we get rid of this again, okay, its normal position is here. And we're going to move this left 200 pixels. Okay, so it's moved from the left 200 pixels according to where it originally sat, which was here. Okay, so when we move it around, we're moving it and positioning it relative to its original position. Okay, now let's take a look at position absolute. So on this uh, yellow square here, let's add a position of absolute. Let's see what happens. Okay, something strange has happened. The green square has actually seemed to have disappeared. What's actually happened is when it's given a position of absolute, the element, in this case our yellow square here, is removed from the normal document flow. So this means that it's positioned relative to the initial containing block. So for example, in our HTML file here, if our yellow square here, this one here, was actually wrapped in another div, then the yellow square will be positioned relative to that outer div, or its container. As it so happens, in this scenario, its container is the window. So if we were to say from the top, zero pixels, it goes right to the top here because the container here is the browser window. And we can say left, zero pixels. And it goes right into the corner here. Now it's important to note here that when we move this around, it's moving based upon the position or the coordinates of the top left-hand corner. So when we say left, let's say 50 pixels, and let's change top to 20 pixels. This top left-hand corner here is the origin. So what's happened is, is it's moved, if you imagine it's in the corner here, it's moved 
50 pixels from the left and 20 pixels from the top. For now, let's set this to, uh, let's say 200 pixels and from the left, let's do 200 pixels as well. Okay. Now let's take a look at the fixed positioning. So let's add position fixed. And guys, check this out. This is now rooted or fixed to the page and we can actually scroll and everything else moves except for this fixed element. You can actually use this to actually come up with some, uh, some cool designs. We can of course still move it around. So let's say top 100 pixels. So 100 pixels on the top. And in fact, let's go for 500 pixels. And left, let's go for, let's say 500 pixels as well. Okay, and here still we have that fixed positioning. So we get this uh, effect here. Okay, and finally we come on to position of sticky. So if you go to our HTML file, you'll see that on one of these paragraphs, I've actually got an ID of sticky right here. So in our CSS file, we can, let's give it a background first so we can actually see where it is. So, okay, so it's this one here. And let's give it a position of sticky. Now notice something happened. Our paragraph element with position of sticky has actually come forward and in front of our green square, which had a position of fixed. We can use the Z index to fix this though. So we can say Z index, let's just say one. And Z index is basically reordering and positioning elements in front or behind. So the higher this Z index figure here, the more weight this will give to the element. So for example, if we wanted our paragraph element to be in front of, uh, of the fixed element, then we can say Z index anything higher than one, Z index of two. And now you can see it's actually positioned in front of it. So that's just a little tip on the uh, Z index there. So back to our sticky element here, let's say top 20 pixels. And now let's see what it actually does. So let's, let's scroll and it's behaving as you would expect it to behave. But here, it actually gets stuck, hence the term sticky. So again, we can scroll up and it gets stuck there and you can continue to scroll. So again, you can come up with some really cool designs with position sticky. Now guys, the best way to learn this is to practice, okay? Start to understand what each position is and what they do, and then you can play around with different elements and see how they affect each other. So for example, what would happen if we had a container that had a position of relative, and then inside that we had an element with a position of absolute? Well, as we learned when we looked at the uh, absolutely positioned element, it's positioned relative to its container. And here, its container was actually the browser window. So here we can say zero pixels and zero pixels, okay? So it goes right into the corner there. Let me just very quickly show you what would happen if we had a container on this element. So I'm just going to say, let's just give it a class of container. And let's place this inside here. Okay, no difference yet. But now, let's specify class of container. And let's just give it a border, five pixels, solid, black. Let's give it a width of 300 pixels and a height of 300 pixels. Okay, so we've got this uh, this container here. Still, our absolutely positioned element is in the same place, there's no effect. But now let's see what happens when we add a position of relative to this container. Position relative. Look what's happened. We have a container here and inside that container, we have an element that is positioned absolutely. This is positioned relatively, and this is positioned as absolute. And so now these values, top zero pixels, left zero pixels, is going to be relative to its container, okay? That's why this is zero pixels from the top and zero pixels from the left. So it's right up in this top left-hand corner of this container. Okay guys, so as I said, the best way to actually learn this is to actually 
practice, play around with the different elements, see how they affect each other, and you'll pick this up in no time. And as I said, CSS positioning is vital to understanding and knowing how to lay out your elements on the page. Okay, so that's it for this lesson, guys. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.